All right, so welcome everyone to today's University of Victoria Center for Biomedical Research, Cafe Scientifique. I'm Dr. Leanne Swain. I'm an associate professor in the Division of Medical Sciences, um, and I'll be your host uh, and question moderator tonight. So I'll just start by acknowledging with res respect to the Lekwungen peoples on whose traditional territory the University of Victoria stands and the Songhees, Esquimalt, and Musanish peoples whose historical relationships with the land continue to this day. So for those uh, new to Café Scientifique, what we do is welcome scientific researchers um, affiliated with UVic to share their work with the community. Um, so as you, many of you know, pre-COVID, this was in person. And so for the time being, we're, we've been doing this virtually. Um, so we won't have uh, any interruptions for questions during the talk, um, as Ian mentioned uh, just before we started and as he has posted in the chat. Um, so please just note your questions um, either on a piece of paper or directly in the chat as they come to you. And um, your microphones will remain muted. And then uh, when the talk is done in about 40 to 45 minutes, I'll read out your questions to our speaker. And so that brings me to the introduction of today's speaker. Uh, so today's speaker is Dr. Rishi Gupta. Dr. Gupta is an associate professor in the division, or sorry, in the Department of Civil Engineering at UVic. Um, where he leads the facility for innovative materials and infrastructure monitoring. So he received his master's and PhD in civil engineering from UBC. And his areas of interest include development of sustainable construction technologies, structural health monitor monitoring, and non-destructive evaluation. He has more than 20 years of combined academic and industry experience. He's a fellow of uh, Engineers Canada, a recipient of UVic's REACH Award, um, and a recipient of Teaching Excellence Award from the EGBC. So welcome, Dr. Gupta, and I look forward to your talk. Thank you, uh, Leanne, very much uh, for the kind introduction. Uh, sometimes it doesn't uh, sound like me, but uh, uh, that's, that's great. Uh, and I hope uh, everybody's able to see the screen and hear me all right. Um, so uh, with that, uh, I will begin uh, the, the topic uh, of my uh, presentation today is uh, uh, using uh, biomimicry uh, for uh, the development of uh, self-cleaning surfaces, uh, including uh, wash basins. Um, so the, the last time I, I did, a, I was asked to do a, a, an update on, uh, uh, on an NSERC uh, COVID project that I'm working on. I was only given five minutes uh, to present to the audience. And that actually seemed like a, a speed dating exercise. Uh, but fortunately, um, I think uh, today I have uh, uh, roughly about half an hour to 45 minutes. So that, that's what I've planned uh, with my uh, presentation. And uh, uh, let's uh, jump uh, right into it. Um, so the agenda that I've planned for this evening is uh, 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 the, the first part is actually going to be a, a very broad overview of uh, a, a COVID project uh, that uh, my, me and my team have been working on for the last uh, uh, 10 months or, or so. And uh, if there's enough time, uh, I'll just uh, get into some snippets of uh, uh, some of the other work uh, that my group does. Uh, there's some more uh, uh, biomimicry inspiration that happens uh, in some of the research uh, uh, that, that we do. Uh, so um, to move on, um, the, the, the goal of the, the project, uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, the NSERC uh, funded COVID project that we've been working on. Uh, the, one of the, the main goals is to uh, come up with uh, a coating uh, for surfaces uh, that would be uh, resistant to um, uh, the COVID, uh, the, the novel coronavirus. Um, I should mention right at the beginning that uh, uh, even though we started out with, with, with the very focused goal of uh, uh, having a, a coating that's resistant to uh, the novel coronavirus, we, we somewhat broadened the scope. And um, uh, so you may interchangeably hear me uh, use uh, bacteria versus virus, uh, uh, recognizing that, that both of these are, are, are very different, but you may hear uh, me, me using that interchangeably as, uh, as we move in, into the presentation. Uh, one of the, the goals uh, that we have of our project, uh, and it's a little bit of a softer goal, um, uh, sort of uh, an impact on a society uh, is uh, uh, the idea of promoting and uh, not just hand washing 
uh, but actually promoting a safe hand washing and especially in public areas. So we'll get, get into a little bit of that uh, as, as we move forward. So I, I thought uh, um, I'd tell you a little bit of a short story. I was, uh, I was told uh, uh, that Cafe Scientific is, uh, is, a, is a nice place to tell stories. Um, so um, I, I just wanted to begin with um, sort of my story uh, for the last uh, many years. Um, and I, I go back, you know, five or 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, and we, we know um, uh, for, for many years, there's, there's, there's been this big push uh, for hand washing. Uh, and we know even pre-pandemic that hand washing is actually one of the, uh, one of the most effective ways of uh, uh, stopping the spread of a, a, a whole bunch of diseases, uh, not just COVID, uh, but also things like influenza and a lot of other uh, communicable uh, uh, diseases. Um, so um, I think the slide, sorry, jumped on me a little bit. Uh, yeah, there we go. So um, I take back, uh, take you back uh, uh, roughly about, uh, this is March of, uh, or uh, probably about June actually of 2020. Uh, and I took my toddler to uh, one of the parks in, uh, uh, in Gordon Head, uh, Bisley Park. Uh, and I was actually quite surprised last year to see a, a nice looking sign that says, play it safe. It talks about, uh, uh, it spoke about physical uh, distancing. Um, uh, it spoke, spoke about uh, children not being in groups, uh, but there was one little uh, bubble here that actually mentioned about uh, 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 wash your hands prior to use of the park and also wash your hands uh, post using the park. So washing your hands prior would be okay because you wash your hands at home and, and show up at the park. Uh, but how nice would it be for for uh, uh, for for children and 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 uh, everybody accompanying them uh, to be able to wash their hands right after using the park uh, um, uh, on site? Um, our chief medical doctor for for the longest time has been saying uh, that uh, hand washing uh, is uh, a, a, a very effective way. You know, wash your hands, wash your hands. Um, and I, I, I want to take a moment to chat about uh, hand sanitizing because that's something that I usually get asked, uh, 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 hand washing versus uh, hand sanitizing. Uh, both are okay, um, but uh, uh, what we started seeing, uh, in, including in my own family, is uh, some of the issues with hand sanitizing. So uh, uh, folks with um, uh, eczema or folks with uh, uh, dermatitis uh, uh, on, on hands, for example, uh, hand sanitizer is uh, not a very viable option for uh, for those people. Um, the last photograph that I have here is actually again uh, by my toddler. You're going to see uh, a few references uh, made to my uh, little one at home uh, because that was sort of the inspiration of of this project uh, uh, for me. Um, so this is uh, uh, she started uh, uh, elementary school this year. So she um, made a little sign back in September uh, saying that uh, wash your hands and um, uh, the different situations when you should be washing your hands. So uh, we, we know all of this. Uh, and uh, uh, again, we know that uh, uh, there are lots of high touch surfaces. So this, this photograph is, is again of my toddler. I took this photograph, uh, I believe in, uh, was again in, in uh, uh, April or May. Uh, and this is uh, one of the uh, malls. Uh, this is uh, Hillside Mall. And I had my daughter trying to wash hands. And you can actually see, given uh, the height of, of uh, my, my daughter and looking at the height of the wash basin, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we would wonder if it's indeed a good exercise uh, for my uh, little one to be washing hands, or she's actually picking up more uh, uh, bacteria and viruses uh, from the surfaces. So you can see her hands are actually touching the countertop and, and so on. So we, we were all, always concerned about that. And uh, uh, the other one, I don't expect you to be able to read this uh, or, or see this very much. This is actually a plan view of uh, Mayfair Mall. And uh, we typically uh, like to uh, park uh, our car at the uh, Douglas Street uh, location right, right here. And uh, what we noticed over the years was uh, the location of the washrooms uh, is always on the other si side of the mall. Uh, so one of the locations being uh, here, another washroom uh, located here, I, and I know there's a new washroom that has been uh, recently constructed a couple of years ago. Uh, but, but the idea being that even if you wash your hands after you were done uh, visiting the mall, by the time you get to where you're parked, 
you probably end up uh, coming uh, in contact with a lot of uh, high contact surfaces like door handles and door knobs um, and, and so on. So this was always at the back of our, our mind. Uh, and in April uh, 2020, uh, the phone rang uh, from one, one of my industry partners uh, and um, uh, my industry partner, she said, uh, hey, Rishi, you know, do you want to do something uh, to promote uh, safe uh, hand washing uh, in, uh, in, in the country? And I'll, I'll come back to who my industry partner is. Uh, the uh, industry part partner is a local, uh, uh, is a Canadian company based out of Mission that basically manufactures wash basins and bathtubs and, and a whole bunch uh, of uh, different products. Um, so in April uh, or May, uh, it was very timely. Uh, NSERC, uh, which is a funding agency, uh, had a special call that came out uh, for uh, uh, COVID Alliance grant, and uh, we thought it was very timely. We put in a uh, put in a proposal in um, in, April, in in May of 2020, and uh, in just about a couple of weeks, uh, the uh, the project uh, was approved. And uh, here we are uh, since uh, May. Uh, uh, except for two weeks uh, when my lab was shut down. Uh, we've been navig navigating through a whole bunch of uh, safety work plans uh, on campus and uh, have been able to keep our lab open uh, throughout the, the pan pan pandemic uh, and uh, have been working on, uh, on, on the project. So with that little uh, story, uh, let's uh, get uh, into the project and let's talk about uh, some of the details. Um, so. Uh, the, the goals uh, for the project, uh, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, some of them include um, coming up with a surface that's self-cleaning. Um, and uh, how great would it be if the surface was self-cleaning and at the same time was anti-viral? Uh, that would be uh, 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 amazing. And uh, this is where some of the inspiration for the biomimicry actually comes in. And I'll, I'll touch upon that in, in my uh, following slides. Um, and the idea uh, for the project was not just uh, for wash basins, uh, but perhaps looking at uh, even the existing surfaces. So it, if it's your uh, existing kitchen countertops, if it's your existing faucets, uh, your door handles, how great would it be for a, to have a, a spray on uh, 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 or hand painted coating of some sort uh, that actually uh, is uh, antiviral and, and self cleaning. Uh, one of the goals here, like I mentioned before, is to deploy uh, uh, wash basins, uh, especially uh, in public places, and especially, if possible, at the entries and exits of uh, some of these uh, public places. Um, some of the outcomes uh, that uh, we are hoping uh, to have uh, by the time we finish this project, uh, project is uh, to uh, have our industry partner, uh, which is uh, uh, I just mentioned Valley Acrylic is our industry partner. And uh, we are hoping that by the time we finish this product uh, project, uh, our industry partner would uh, be able to uh, have a new line uh, of wash basins uh, with the special coating uh, on, on top. Um, our second uh, outcome that uh, we are hoping of this uh, project uh, would be to promote hand washing. Uh, but at the same time, I, I underlined a few letters here uh, to mention that uh, the, the mindset of, uh, uh, of the infrastructure owners will actually have to change uh, to allow uh, for installation of uh, wash basins in, in, uh, in public places. And I'll, I'll, I'll touch upon that in a few minutes. And like I mentioned before, uh, if possible, uh, the existing hand railings in uh, very busy areas like downtown or near uh, ferry terminals, for example, uh, how great would it be to have a coating on that as well? So. Um, let's get into uh, the little bit of science. I, I, I'll try and keep it uh, light uh, for this evening. Um, but uh, there are two effects uh, that uh, we, are, we are talking about. Uh, the first one is the physical effect. And um, uh, this, is, this is where you see uh, a, a lotus leaf. Um, and uh, the, the biomimicry involved here for lotus leaf is uh, uh, whenever you look at a, a lotus leaf, uh, what you're going to find is after a little bit of light drizzle or rain, uh, the leaves actually uh, uh, self-clean themselves and uh, they look always look in pristine uh, condition. And uh, so, so that's what we wanna do. And the, the reason for that is uh, the, the microscopic structure of uh, the, the lotus leaf. So if you look at this photo above, uh, the idea would be you have a surface, it may have 
viruses or bacteria, for example. But when you have water, the water droplets would actually pick those contaminants and actually wash, wash it out. So uh, we call it uh, the lotus uh, leaf uh, effect. Uh, and uh, uh, we are thinking of this phenomena uh, for self-cleaning of, uh, of different surfaces. Um, the second component uh, is also very interesting. And that would be uh, using um, the chemical effect uh, of the coatings. So there are certain materials that are well known uh, to um, uh, kill viruses, uh, including uh, the novel coronavirus. So again, I'll, I'll touch upon that uh, a little bit uh, as uh, we move forward. So um, a combined effect of uh, changing the physical characteristics of the surface and also changing the chemistry of the surface would actually make this uh, 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 self-cleaning and uh, an antiviral. Uh, one of the materials um, uh, very well known uh, to um, uh, uh, remove or uh, kill uh, the novel coronavirus is, uh, is actually copper. Uh, and the story goes that my uh, forefathers and my ancestors actually uh, used to use copper uh, 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 for many centuries. Uh, this, this is actually a, a, a photograph taken from my kitchen counter. Uh, this is uh, what uh, we've been using uh, for many years. And uh, I don't know if you can see this, that's, this has been my copper mug for uh, many years. This predates uh, the pandemic, uh, but apparently um, uh, the, the copper has uh, very good antiviral properties. Uh, and again, uh, for, for full uh, disclosure, I'm, this is not uh, uh, medical advice uh, that I'm giving you, but this is, this is uh, well documented in, in literature. Uh, that copper is, uh, is great for removal of viruses. So um, what I thought was keeping an eye on the time, um, at, uh, there are different stages of the ongoing work. And I thought I'd quickly touch upon some of these, uh, beginning with a, a very uh, um, uh, a focused and uh, 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 very time consuming literature review uh, that, that we did uh, for, for this project. So let's, let's chat about that uh, to begin with. Um, so the literature review was happening uh, back in uh, July. Uh, maybe uh, we started doing a, a literature review in June. Uh, we wanted to actually find out what research has already been done on different types of materials and different types, types of coatings. So we started with a very broad base of uh, papers, over 3,000 papers uh, that we found on, on uh, this topic. Um, and uh, uh, with the help of our entire team, uh, we were able to um, uh, conduct uh, the, the literature review. Um, and uh, uh, we found a few interesting things. Um, and uh, what we found uh, in literature uh, was uh, a couple of things. Uh, the first thing, and, and we, we know this now, we, we didn't quite know this back in May or June because uh, the pandemic was new and we didn't quite understand uh, how uh, the, the virus actually behaved. Uh, but we know now that uh, the, the sustenance of uh, the novel coronavirus uh, sorry, the, the sustenance of uh, the novel coronavirus is inversely proportional uh, to temperature and to humidity. So if your temperature was high, uh, the virus can't sustain and if uh, for too long. And if uh, the moisture was high, the, the, again, the, the virus can't uh, sustain too long. Again, when we did the, the, the literature search, we actually found uh, quite a few uh, uh, metals, quite a few metal oxides that actually had biocidal uh, properties. And again, one of the things that kept coming up right at the top uh, was uh, copper and uh, copper oxide. Uh, so uh, we learned uh, quite, quite, quite a bit uh, from what was already happening. And uh, again, one interesting side note, side note here was um, every week that we waited and we reconducted our literature review, there was tons of information coming forward. Uh, so uh, we decided to uh, uh, fix uh, our uh, our search uh, somewhere at the end of September, and uh, we've, we've published, uh, and uh, this is an open access uh, article uh, with the entire team of uh, researchers. Um, and uh, this actually talks about the state of art. And again, uh, the caveat here would be that this is as of September of 2020, uh, much research uh, again has taken place uh, subsequently uh, to that. Um, so after literature review, uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, sourcing of materials. So we learned a lot of things for, from the literature review. Uh, we learned a lot of things 
uh, from some of the, in, uh, the basic research that we had already begun in, in the lab. And based on that, we uh, identified certain uh, materials uh, that we wanted to, uh, to, to deal with. And um, what we did uh, was uh, uh, we sought advice uh, from our industry partner. And again, you're not expected uh, to read uh, or, or be, to be able to read all of these, uh, this text, but, but these are basically different surfaces uh, that our industry partner uses on the wash basins. Um, the, the wash basins, the most common wash basins that we find uh, in, in, in our households uh, or in many commercial places are made out of acrylic. Uh, so there are different layers in, in, in the body of the wash basin. There's actually fiberglass, uh, there's a vinyl coating. And finally, uh, the, the finish, the, the, the gloss that you see on the wash basin is uh, what I'm going to call in my presentation as the gel coat. And that's the gel coat that we are trying to modify uh, for our industry partner. So we took a whole bunch of base materials for wash basins. Uh, we wanted to include a few others uh, like uh, uh, copper, for example. So uh, we wanted to see that if in theory we did produce a wash basin that was made out of copper, uh, how, how interesting and, and, and what would be the effect on uh, the, uh, the viruses and bacteria, for example. Uh, we also included uh, a few other materials like steel. Um, and uh, these days uh, there are wash basins that are also made out of um, uh, things like concrete, uh, but we, we, we didn't get uh, that, that far. Um, so that was the base material. And uh, to modify the coating that goes right at the top, uh, we went into uh, identifying a few nano fillers. Um, I'm unable to disclose the exact uh, constituents of uh, the nano fillers that we're working with uh, due to some of the IP discussions uh, that are taking place with our industry partners. Uh, but the idea here was to use these nano fillers to modify the uh, physical morphology of uh, of the coating that goes on, on the wash basins. Uh, so after sourcing uh, all of these materials, uh, the sourcing uh, was a little bit challenging uh, back in uh, August and September. Again, uh, owing to the uh, pandemic, uh, things were not moving as fast and it, it slowed us down a little bit. Um, but once we had the materials, uh, then we wanted to get into uh, characterizing uh, the base samples. Uh, so if we have acrylic or we have copper or we have steel, or if you have stainless steel, for example, uh, what, what's the difference between this as far as the hydrophobicity or even, even, even um, uh, not just super hydrophobicity, but just hydrophobicity is concerned. Uh, so this is a setup uh, from my lab uh, in, uh, in FIMIM. And uh, this is just one example of uh, how we've been characterizing our, our material. Uh, what ends up happening here is, uh, the, if you can see my cursor, uh, that's the stage right here. Uh, we put the, the base materials uh, with coating or without coating. And what we do is uh, with a very uh, small, if you can see this little syringe here, uh, we drop uh, a little droplet. And on the computer screen, you can see the, the different droplets. And what we try and do here is, uh, it's a basic test, uh, but what we try and do here is we try and measure the contact angle the, the bubble makes on the surface. Uh, and if the contact angle is higher, uh, we know that the, the material is behaving uh, like a, a more, is more hydrophobic if the contact angle is, is higher. Uh, so we've been uh, 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 doing this test on uh, different combinations of, of materials. And uh, then let's chat about applying the coating to base samples. So uh, we have a whole suite of equipment. Uh, whenever we have uh, nano fillers or any sort of fillers being added in a liquid suspension, uh, more often than never, what we find is the, the fillers don't want to mix with, with, with the coating uh, liquid. Uh, so we have a few techniques uh, in our lab. Uh, these, we have uh, simple magnetic stirrers, uh, but we also have uh, things like homogenizers. We have things uh, uh, like uh, sonicators, which use ultrasound waves uh, to help disperse particles that typically don't want to disperse in, in, in a liquid medium. Uh, so here, here are a few examples. So you look at the solution here and right at the bottom is a filler. Uh, so sometimes you try and mix this, it doesn't want to mix. So I, this, this would not be a go. Uh, but if you look at some of the other suspensions here, uh, the, the uh, filler material is, is well distributed. So these, these three would actually be uh, a, a go as far as uh, 
our research is concerned. So uh, back uh, once the, the base material is coated uh, with, with a modified coating, uh, we are again trying to char characterize the coated samples. And um, there are a few things uh, going on on the slide. Uh, this is the uh, tensiometer for contact angle that you just spoke about. Uh, but in addition, we've also been doing some microscopy. Uh, so the idea being we take these uh, coated samples and look uh, at uh, under a, a scanning electron microscope uh, to see uh, uh, what the what what the what the morphology is of of the material pre coating and and post coating. Uh, so some of this work is happening in the advanced uh, microscopy lab at uh, at UVic, and uh, finally we have some um, uh, tests happening, uh, uh, and I'll I'll talk a little bit about this um, in the FPS uh, facility at at UVic, uh, trying to see. Uh, what what happens to different uh, coated and uncoated samples if they're inoculated with bacteria or, or viruses how long do they retain or last over the surface so uh, again uh, if i if i pause for a second uh, we look back at uh, 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 if you go back in time maybe uh, march or april of last year uh, there was a lot of confusion happening uh, with the retention of the novel coronavirus on different surfaces. There were stories about, uh, 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 you know, the novel coronavirus lasting on surface for one day. You know, there, were, uh, 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 there was literature about five days and this news about uh, uh, 17 days on a cruise ship or, or whatever. So our idea here is to find uh, the best coating, uh, which can actually uh, 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 not have the bacteria or viruses stay on the surface uh, for too long. Uh, so th those tests are uh, ongoing. Um, I just wanted to show you some glimpses of uh, the, the tests. And again, I uh, unfortunately had to uh, uh, hide the X axis here. I can't show you the different mixes, uh, but what the Y axis is actually showing you is the average contact angles. And we are not quite in the uh, uh, super hydrophobic or hydrophobic range yet. But you can see with the addition of different coating uh, fillers, the contact angles can change quite a bit. So we, we can go from almost 65 degrees to, to 85 degrees uh, in terms of, uh, of contact angle. Um, this is the, the tests uh, that are going on in the uh, facility for biomolecular uh, sample preparation, FBS, uh, and also in uh, uh, Dr. Mazumdar's lab in, uh, in biology at, uh, at UVic. And again, uh, the idea here is uh, we inoculate uh, different uh, materials um, with a solution uh, which has certain concentration of, uh, and, and like I mentioned before, we, we actually working with bacteria right now and uh, we, we move over to viruses very soon and we incubate this uh, under different conditions and then we go back and under a, 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 a fluorescent uh, a, a microscope try and find out the total biomass of uh, what's what's actually left left behind. Uh, so with that, I'm coming uh, towards uh, the uh, first half of uh, my presentation, just keeping an eye on, on the time. Um, and uh, now the last step that I wanted to chat about uh, is the prototype uh, wash basin. Um, so let's assume now I'm going to take you a, a few weeks forward and say, okay, we have this ideal coating uh, that uh, our industry partner can use on the wash basins. Uh, it is self-cleaning. It doesn't allow the, the back bacteria or viruses to stick on the surface. Uh, it looks pristine like a, like a lotus leaf. Uh, but, but now the idea being uh, what kind of wash basin would be ideal if you wanted to use it in public places, for example. So uh, there is a whole suite of wash basins. You probably have a couple different types or more at, at your own homes. Uh, this uh, going from a, a stainless steel uh, wash basin, typically in, in kitchens, uh, we, we find these uh, to acrylic uh, wash basins, the ones uh, we, are, we are actually working on uh, actively right now. Uh, and again, there are uh, wash basins made out of stone, uh, ceramic, and like I mentioned before, uh, even uh, wash basin made out of uh, concrete. So our focus uh, would be first to see if uh, the coating can work on acrylic, and then we we we, we uh, might get into uh, looking at how uh, the coating could uh, could work on some of the other surfaces like stainless steel. So um, 
one of the things that I forgot to mention on, on this is uh, uh, there are different types of wash basins that are standalone pedestal type of wash basins, uh, which sometimes might be easier uh, to deploy in public places um, where uh, you may not have a wall uh, to install your wash basin like it is in, in this particular case. Uh, so th there are, there's a whole uh, 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 gamut uh, of uh, wash basins that are available depending on uh, the situation. Uh, so what's uh, what's next? Um, our project uh, 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 technically ends in May, and uh, we have a few uh, things planned uh, for the next few months. Um, and uh, uh, late in the evening, this may get a little little bit heavy, uh, but again, I'll, I'll try and keep this uh, as light as possible. Uh, so one of the aspects that we're working on right now is uh, once we've identified a wash basin, there are different components in the wash basin, uh, the faucet, the type of faucet, the faucet height, the P-trap that goes underneath. So if somebody is washing their hands uh, in a wash basin, uh, would, would the water actually uh, uh, splash out? And if it does, uh, then it obviously has contaminants in them. So how can we reduce that? And one other aspect is uh, the uh, retention of the fluid in the wash basin. So what we want is uh, once you've washed your hands, we want the water uh, to uh, very quickly drain uh, through the wash basin. So I'm just showing you a few snippets. Uh, what we've been doing is we've been taking some uh, uh, designs. Uh, we've converted these into uh, CAD drawings. Uh, we are getting into a little bit of interesting fluid mechanics here. And the idea here being that if you have a wash basin, this is time zero, it's full of water, uh, given uh, the, uh, the size of the, the drain, the type of drain and so on. The idea being we are trying to simulate how fast would this wash basin actually empty out. Um, and uh, the goal would be faster at MTOs, like I mentioned before, uh, the inoculation time of the wash basin with, with uh, contaminants uh, would actually be, uh, be, be lower. Uh, a few other things. Uh, this is uh, a few photographs uh, from our industry partner in, in Mission. And uh, you can see they have a wide uh, range of uh, wash basins, bathtubs. And uh, the idea here uh, would be, uh, even if you just look at the self-cleaning aspect of the coating, the idea here would be uh, to, uh, to be able to have uh, uh, not just wash basins, but different, different products uh, which are coated uh, with uh, this uh, self-cleaning uh, aspect. Uh, so we are hoping our industry partner would be able to commercialize this and add a product uh, moving forward over, over the coming months. And uh, I'm now uh, getting into a, a, a few uh, uh, softer uh, sides of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the presentation. Um, the, I think a little bit of a societal change uh, will be needed. Uh, and I think we all will have to be open uh, to the new normal um, and not just uh, 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 people, but I think infrastructure owners uh, will have to change their mindset a little bit uh, if you want to see uh, those wash basins at entrances and exits of, of, uh, of buildings. So uh, a little bit, uh, on uh, the light side, uh, I was doing a little search and uh, uh, whenever I'm talking to infrastructure owners, for example, and say, you know, uh, having an outdoor sink at your entrance or exit would be great because, you know, it's gonna be in the face of people and they, they, they're gonna want and, and wash their hands. The, the usual question is about uh, plumbing. Uh, the usual question is about uh, hot water uh, and, uh, and, um, and so on. Uh, but I had just looking on the web found this uh, very interesting uh, portable uh, wash basin with its own little uh, drain system and, and water system. Um, I found this uh, particular uh, uh, wash basin made out of stainless steel, steel quite interesting, uh, more because of the location of the sink. Uh, so as you can see, this is actually on the outside of a washroom. And again, I, I've been uh, trying to promote the the decoupling of wash basins from washrooms. Uh, the wash basins doesn't, don't necessarily have to be inside a, a, a washroom. They should be decoupled if you want to promote more hand washing to take place. So if a wash basin is outside, if somebody just wanted to wash hands, they're not touching the door handles or, or, or the door knobs uh, to get uh, into a washroom. Uh, this this is my uh, favorite uh, phot photograph here. Uh, this was an article um, uh, 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 talking about uh, promoting safe uh, hand washing. This was in uh, a, uh, apparently a school in 
uh, Warren County. Uh, and uh, I just love this uh, 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 amazing design. So there's a, a single PVC pipe with, uh, I think I counted uh, 10 wash basins uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, on this photograph and the water is just draining out into the gravel on the back. Uh, so uh, j just thought this is this is interesting, and this this is something that we need to do if we really wanted to promote hand washing, uh, especially at, at a young age. Um, so again, keeping an eye on time, uh, I'm getting into a sort of my last little bit of uh, the presentation here. Or maybe just uh, take five min five more minutes of your time. Uh, so just want to thank the entire team uh, uh, that's on this uh, uh, project. Uh, including uh, obviously our very valuable students here, uh, Kara, Amin, and, and Max, uh, who've been very actively working on, on the project. Um, our uh, civil en engineering uh, uh, technician team has been very dil diligently guiding us through the pandemic to keep our labs open. Uh, a special uh, thanks to Becky from FBS and Elaine uh, from uh, the Advanced Microscopy Lab. Uh, industry partner Valley Acrylic, and uh, of course, uh, last but not least, NSERC. Uh, without them, uh, we wouldn't have the funding to uh, to get to the the stage we are at. Um, so uh, the last uh, few slides uh, that I thought I'll share with you is uh, uh, what else uh, do we do in my research lab in FIMIM? So there's the COVID project, uh, but we definitely do a few uh, other things in in FIMIM. Um, once I took my uh, CV and I, I put it into the software which produces a collage uh, and you can see uh, a whole bunch of things show up uh, in terms of what I do in, in, in research. Um, but the one common thread here in all of this is, uh, is definitely materials. So uh, coming up with innovative materials, innovative construction technologies is our focus. Um, we go from the whole uh, scale of uh, nano uh, so this is an image of uh, uh, small uh, fibers uh, that uh, we have been developing uh, under the microscope uh, to uh, uh, micro uh, and macro level. I'll show you some more photographs of, of this. Um, one aspect of uh, biomimicry that we've been working on for the last um, uh, 10 years or so uh, is what's called a smart uh, self-sealing um, uh, cement cementitious materials. And uh, the, uh, the inspiration here is of skin. So, you know, typically if you get a cut on your skin, um, the, the system uh, uh, behind uh, uh, the, the skin uh, kicks in, it very quickly uh, blocks uh, the, the flow of blood. And very soon you have uh, both sealing initially and eventually healing of, uh, of your skin takes place. Uh, so we've been trying to use the same idea for uh, uh, for uh, infrastructure, for concrete, for bridges, for roads. And uh, the idea being, uh, what if uh, the, the material could be smart enough to heal on its own uh, over a period of time? So this is where uh, uh, we've also tried uh, to use bacteria. Uh, so um, I know we are sick and tired of viruses these days, uh, but uh, uh, trust me, there is, uh, some bacteria that's, that's, that's good, that can be used uh, in, in a positive way. So what I'm showing you here is this, this could be your basement wall. So you're looking at a cross section of your basement wall and on a very rainy snowy day, you may have puddles of water on the outside. So what, what philosophy we have here, we've developed certain materials for this is what if your concrete wall could have these special little admixtures or pellets sitting in the wall uh, dormant but the day the water enters into the, uh, into the wall, so uh, uh, you may want to pay uh, close attention at, at this. So water enters the wall and now those little pellets get activated and they start creating these microscopic crystals. And that's an image of the microscopic crystals. And it actually starts blocking all the pores in your wall. So indoors, when you're indoors, you actually don't get a leaky wall. Uh, on, on the inside. So just wanted to show you one other aspect of biomimicry. And we do, like I mentioned, all the way from uh, small micro samples of one inch in cross section uh, to uh, round panels. Uh, these are fairly large. You require at least two people to even lift them up. Uh, two, all the way, uh, this is uh, just uh, six months old uh, to fixing um, uh, the uh, 
uh, this is uh, this is a site uh, again at Uvic. Uh, this is a concrete uh, bus pad uh, that we've reinforced with a special type of fiber, and uh, the one that we have reinforced has uh, not cracked uh, over the last uh, uh, four months. So we are very excited uh, about that. Uh, last two three slides, uh, and I'll wrap this up uh, within the next two three minutes. Uh, we also do a bit of forensics in a lab. Uh, so we have a whole suite of non-destructive uh, test equipment, including drones uh, that we use uh, for assessing the condition of uh, infrastructure. That's uh, again, a photograph uh, in my lab, uh, uh, flying uh, drones. And uh, this entire presentation that I've presented would not be possible without uh, my team in, in FIMIM, uh, bright uh, young students at UVIC. So thank you to, to all of them. And uh, I think that's almost bang on 45 minutes. So uh, I want to thank all of you for spending the evening uh, with us uh, uh, listening to the presentation. So over to you, Leanne. Great. So uh, that was a fantastic presentation. Really, really interesting. Um, so many neat things that you're doing and congrats on the study um, and also making so much progress um, whilst uh, there are a lot of barriers and, uh, you know, issues to work through. So that's really commendable. Um, and I'm sure that you downplayed the challenges. <laughs> I'm sure it was, <laughs> I'm sure they were considerable at times. So that's really just really fantastic work. So we've got a couple of questions in the chat already. Um, and so I'll just uh, start by reading those out to you. Um, so from Alan Miller, uh, would powders and oils from makeup, sunscreen, et cetera, cling to the surface and affect the self-cleaning properties? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> so um, we haven't quite uh, uh, thought uh, about that, um, but my initial, thought would be that yes, it, it, it would affect uh, because we, you know, we typically, so if you just look at our typical wash basins and our bathtubs, considering different materials, they are somewhat hydrophobic. Like you drop a little what, what drop of water, it, it just starts flowing down. So the idea for us would be to make it super hydrophobic. So it's the, the, the flow of contaminants is even faster. But, but I, I think that's a very good point uh, that um, I think fine uh, powders uh, would would probably affect the flow uh, on the surface for sure, but but I think the idea would be that once you clean it up, then you're back to being uh, uh, super hydrophobic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's an intriguing question and and an interesting potential follow up study. Um, <laughs> could these self cleaning surfaces? So this is from Denise. Um, could these self cleaning surfaces be incorporated into household kitchen and bathroom countertops? Yes, so so th th that's a very good uh, question, and uh, um, our initial focus is on um, wash basins, and within the wash basins, our initial focus is on acrylic, like I mentioned. Uh, but uh, we are looking into the possibility of uh, application to other surfaces, and uh, kitchen countertops uh, would be uh, a very close match uh, to to what we are working with. Uh, the next one uh, on the list would actually be stainless steel because we find that there's, you know, the, the kitchen basins most often than never are, uh, I shouldn't say that, uh, we find a lot of stainless steel wash basins also in commercial facilities. So yes, so uh, that, that's uh, definitely on our agenda. Nice. And yeah, and while you were presenting in addition to the basins, I was thinking of um, like toilets, like public toilets, um, it would make sense. Um, and just their, just the way they're constructed as well, um, and touch surfaces and things like that, um, would, it's something that would be, I think, helpful probably to think about. So that's, that's really interesting. Maybe to, to extend this, that idea a little bit further, um, one of the things I was wondering, because you mentioned copper and you mentioned, you know, there's, there's quite a few interesting materials here. Is it, do you think it's possible to incorporate them into masks in some way? to kind of prevent um, viruses and bacteria from sticking to masks? Uh, because we know that's sort of like one of the problems with us always like adjusting our masks and having sort of dirty hands. So is that something that you think could be possible? 
De definitely. And I, I think especially the masks, uh, which are not like throwaway masks, right? The ones that you clean up then, and, and exactly like you said, yeah, you know, sometimes you say, you know, mask could be worse because you're touching your mask all the time and you're not trying to adjust it and, and whatever. So uh, absolutely. I, I think um, uh, we haven't got thought about that. The only thing to think about is uh, the material, which is usually nano or micro. Like you don't want that material to leak into uh, uh, your, uh, you know, you don't want that to be uh, <laughs> br br breathing in. Yeah. Uh, but 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 you're absolutely right. I mean, there are a few other um, uh, things um, that we've been thinking about, and uh, uh, I, I just happen to have this on my on my uh, desk right now. Uh, there's actually this uh, company uh, that uh, it's a it's a UVIC spinoff. They actually produce these very thin. As adhesives of copper. Uh, cool. And the idea behind this would be that you actually can just stick it on to door knobs and door handles. So again, uh, I mean, uh, you know, has nothing to do with my research, but uh, uh, I think similar thing could be on masks as well, actually. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Kind of a weave of a of hydrophobic acrylic in, and um, copper maybe or something like that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, as a, as a biologist, I, I sort of had a question about, um, I haven't looked into this, but I've, it's always been something, a question that's been on my mind in terms of testing sort of the, the viability um, of viruses and bacteria on surfaces. Um, do you test just for presence or do you test whether they can sort of like reinfect cells and that sort of thing? Like what's the sort of extent of, of um, kind of the, the testing for, um, kind of the lifetime of, of the virus or bacteria on the surfaces? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Um, actually, at the moment, we are just looking at how long it takes for the, uh, the vi viruses or bacteria to, uh, you know, um, uh, basically die off on a surface. So we're just doing it on a time scale. And, and that, that's actually been a, um, a little bit of a challenge because we've probably started too broad because, you know, we got five different base materials being coated with three different types of coating. So you've got five times and you have three samples for each. So 15 <laughs> times 345. So that's a big uh, study. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. So you're, but you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, uh, the, one of the other thing uh, you mentioned about whether the bacteria would uh, sort of, you know, you would have them sort of uh, be back on the material. The other question that I usually get asked is how long would the uh, effectiveness of the material last? Like if you had mm -hmm. copper, how long would your copper last? So right. you know, if I have a, 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 a mug, which is pretty thick, I mean, it oxidizes over a period of time. So right, that's where right. you get the antiviral properties. But if right. it's very thin, it's right. someday it's going to uh, not have the same effect anymore. So right. that, that's also a point that we've been thinking about, actually. Yeah, that makes sense. And, but it's built in with its own indicator in a way, right? So that's kind of like helpful, I guess. Um, uh, and then it turns like it turns color with oxidation, right? Exact, exactly. So it's exactly. so it's kind of ideal. Like you sort of know. I guess you kind of know. I I don't know for sure, but um, it looks. So we have a similar question from Anita Cox. Um, how does silver rank as a or it's a related question? How does silver rank as an act antibacterial metal? So now now we're getting into uh, the interesting parts. Um, as uh, uh, I what I can say is silver is also a very strong contender actually for uh, 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 the, the sustenance of viruses on silver is also uh, a short lived. Uh, uh, so uh, again, like I said, I mean, this is getting into the IP stuff, but, but you, you know, there is, there is some some information which is uh, like, just like you, you no. know it. Yeah. So uh, there's no shying away. So, you know, copper and uh, silver. Um, and I mean, I, I can give away a little bit like titanium actually. Uh, is uh, is also very good. So now the next question I usually get asked is obviously about the cost. Uh, and uh, if if we put it into the context of a wash basin, the entire wash basin doesn't have to be copper. Uh, so what we've been thinking about is what if the wash basin was designed in such a way that there were certain segments of the wash basin, like a strip of copper mm. that went at the top. So everything that drains off the copper uh, you know, is uh, is going in. And ag again, I mean, copper is just one example. Copper may not be 100%, uh, but the idea being, even if you can reduce the uh, the the sustenance time of viruses and bacteria, that that that's definitely something. 
Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, so, so many different avenues, so many new ideas to explore. So I imagine it's been a, a little bit, uh, almost um, like a whirlwind for you. Yeah, so I'm, I mean, like you, when you introduced me, I'm, I'm a civil engineer. Uh, the, the only intersection I had with bacteria was uh, four or five years ago when we tried to use bacteria for uh, creating this uh, self-sealing uh, concrete. Uh, but bacteria and viruses was, is, and, and still I'm not an expert at it. So that's why my uh, co-PIs and biology are the ones who've been sort of helping us. And again, we found uh, as we moved forward that uh, virology is so different from just biology. So Totally. It's not the same things. And I, like I mentioned before, I was interchangeably using bacteria and viruses, but even the super hydrophobicity requirements for bacteria is not the same as viruses. Right. So it's been a challenge for sure. I mean, a, a self-cleaning wash basin may be great for not sustaining bacteria, but it may not be the best for viruses. So right. it's like two competing uh, goalposts here actually. Yeah, and does that like um, just sort of uh, uh, you know public health kind of guidelines help inform on um, making those decisions? Like, what are the most important? Like, obviously, COVID nineteen is is in the forefront of all our minds right now. But um, is, is that helpful to get sort of like a collaboration from like public health to kind of inform on what do you think are the most important sort of things that we need to target? Does that factor in? Uh, absolutely. So uh, 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 that's a great question. And whenever I get asked, I sort of, you know, go back and say, okay, you know, no matter what happens to our research uh, in terms of the antiviral properties or, or whatever, even if we can start promoting hand washing, you know, leave, leave alone the, the, the wash basins. But, but even that, I think, will, like I was saying, will require a little bit of mindset change because, um, you know, uh, uh, wash basins are meant to be within washrooms, you know, tucked away, far away. And, you know, nobody wants to take a walk to go to the washroom to wash. And so I think number one is to promote hand washing from, from, uh, from that point of view. If in my mind, if the wash basins are self cleaning in general, that's a, that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, if we have the inclusion of uh, antiviral materials, so now you've got the best of all worlds and, and, uh, uh, we are not there yet, but uh, hopefully one step closer to to that goal. Yeah, that's amazing. Awesome. Do we have any more? I don't see any more questions in the chat, but some really excellent questions. Um, do you have any other comments or last last sort of uh, notes you want to make, Rishi? Uh, well, all I'd say is uh, thank you for listening in and spending the evening and uh, uh, keep washing hands. Awesome. That was so good. <laughs> that was super interesting. Thank you so much. And good luck with your the rest of your project and all of the spin-off projects that I'm sure that it's generating. <laughs> thank, thank you for having me. All right. Have a good one. Thanks everyone yeah. for coming. Bye.